How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to delve into some animation, get that imagination all revved up, get into some creativity, and it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from, I believe it's pronounced Kai Nielsen, even though it looks like it's K from what I, all the research that I did. He's um, a beautiful illustrator. He's got a lot of sensibilities of um, like Dutch and uh, European art with uh, some uh, mix of Asian influences as well and he's just got a really beautiful style kind of reminds me of uh, Edmund Deluc as well um, so definitely check out more from him but I wanted to show you a couple little um, pieces of his and I think he's got a, such a really unique style and it's kind of got a, a sense of flatness to it that a lot of older um, Asian art has and it's really pretty I really like it I think he's got a, a really vivid imagination um, beautiful color choices great layout I love the, the push of the line of action um, throughout this whole composition. It's just really pretty and, uh, like I said, just top-notch style. I love his stuff for sure. So definitely check out more from him. But I did want to share um, a quote that's kind of, um, unfortunately, there's not a lot uh, of him in his own words. So this is kind of said more about his work. And it was, uh, the imagination can conceive of infinite possibilities and grasp an alternate vision where hope remains undimmed. And that um, was a quote said about the, the, the work that, um, that what his work inspires and, and causes someone to feel and think is that there's infinite possibilities with your imagination and that there's an alternate version of a reality where uh, there's always um, hope. And I thought that was really uh, great and, and inspirational um, for myself of, of the vastness of um, the imagination and the unlimited possibilities that you can do with the things that you can create in your head and then bring to life and that's really um, hopefully a, a large part of what this series is about and spending this time with you guys each and every day is to hopefully engage you guys to, to go off and, and push your imagination each and every day and try something um, new or play around with some stuff or just get in there and try and um, amp up that imagination a little bit more um, so that being said let's go ahead and get into some animation for today and today we'll be using the Blake rig. It's a free rig you guys can grab over at Creative Crash, and there will be a link in the description below if you guys wanted to check it out for yourself. And if you're not familiar with what we'll be doing for the rest of the video is we give ourselves 48 frames, it's two seconds of animation. I go off and I find a rig that I've never used before. It's a free resource for you guys to play around with as well. And then we kind of go from there, a little bit of over the shoulder, hang out with me while we animate, a little bit of talking through the process or instruction or guidance or just uh, talking about the creative life and uh, imagination in general. But overall, the main goal of these videos, like I was talking about before, is hopefully encourage you guys and inspire you guys to go off and use your imagination and create something um, amazing and wonderful each and every day and take another step um, in your journey, no matter what medium it is that you guys are using. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and play around here. So I was thinking for this one for some reason, it makes me think that I wanna do um, like an awe-inspired look up walk. I'm trying to get a little, a little bit of an acting beat into a walk for today. So let's tilt the head back. Let's puff the chest out a little bit. And then offset it in the butt here. Heel peel the feet much like the hands are always I think um, they're kind of like snowflakes each rigger has a different setup for how they do fingers and toes and feet and that's uh, usually the chest is set up very similar in the hips and everything but feet and hands are almost each one has a little bit of uniqueness to it which I think is really um, interesting for myself at least Let's go ahead and rotate them outward a little bit in there as well. We just want to create kind of a storytelling pose um, to get our idea across. I think I want to crank that head a little bit further back here, which is rotate C in this case. Do we have an actual neck controller? I don't think there is one. Do a little bit less 
so this on the chest it just feels kind of like there's a not a very natural bend to it or maybe what back there so we'll do a little bit less we'll just scale it back and then pull it back a little bit more there so let's kind of have the hands doing something this is going to come across like this so just kind of open and kind of up gazing up sense of uh, wonder to what's going on here. And let's keep those bent in a little bit more. And at this point we'll tip the wrist out a little bit and rotate it to uh, camera a little bit more. So I'm kind of like this. And a little bit like this. Open the mouth here. Mouth in motion. Don't know if I want to be smiling, but I don't want to really look worried either. Just a little agape in the mouth. There we go. Let's drop the lower lip a little bit more. Upper lip will go ahead and pull it down. Give it a little more dynamic angle, kind of looking down, in which case we want to kind of animate to this. Let's go ahead and um, create a new camera here, uh, just so we can kind of use that one as our reference one, and this one we can move around as much as we want, just so we keep that idea and maintain that. And uh, let's look at the hands here. Let's go a little bit down here on the pinky. It's not really a roll though. Oh well, that's okay. Um, let's do the index in the middle. They do kind of give you a little bit of nice default poses that aren't um, just complete T, which I always appreciate that they give you a little bit of something rather than just flat hands. Sometimes can spark different ideas here too. So let's do something like that. This one down a little bit more. And we'll do a little bit more flat on the top here. And we find kind of a relaxed pose for this hand as well. swivel here. And let's go to this thumb, just so we do something that's not completely the default pose here. Alright, I think that's a good place to start. We've got a silhouette that's working okay. And uh, let's go ahead and We'll go from there. So let's go ahead and save our file. We are using Autodesk Maya 2014 for today's video. And let's go ahead and set our frame range. We're going to go from 0 to 48 here. And then we're going to go ahead and turn everything off except for our nerve curves, our nerve surfaces, and our polygons. So we don't key any attributes that we don't need to. Turn our grid off. Let's go ahead and create a, uh, a base here. Something good. Let's squeeze out there. 
just so we have something for our rough layout here. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we'll go ahead and save our file one more time. Go ahead and go frame zero, grab everything, and hit S on our keyboard. So we lock in our first key. And I think I'll do a cycle for this one as well. Just thinking, do I want to do that or do I want to do one? Let's see. No, I think I don't want to do a cycle. I think we'll do one for our angle here. Because I want it to kind of come closer. So we'll go ahead and go here. Swap that out. Oh, this angle pivot that we did here. Go ahead and tip that forward. Obviously, too much. So, bring that to just a little bit. This one, we'll zero that out and do some heel peel. Look at the spacing in between the two of them. Too much ankle pivot, so we'll bring that down and we'll zero that out to do a little bit of heel peel here. Keep our spacing fairly similar, so we didn't have much in between those. Okay, go ahead and back up a little bit more forward. Okay, and we'll go lock that one in. 12 frames, zero it out here, do a little bit of ankle pivot, bring the hips forward, we'll zero that out, do a little bit of heel peel here, bring that foot back just for spacing, bring that ankle pivot back down here, okay, and lock that one in, and we'll go here to 48, we'll zero that out. forward bring it down a little bit less ankle pivot we just want a little bit there and we'll zero that out do a little bit of heel peel here watch our spacing in between the two steps bring the hips back up a little bit and forward a little bit and flip and make sure we're actually doing our own right curler here Let's look at the hips here. So window animation editor, graph editor. Let's look at the translate Y on the hips. Let's go ahead and just leave that where it is right now. And let's look at the translate Z. That's gonna be the left to right movement. And let's make that a constant. Okay, and just for the idea that we're going with today, we don't want it to be too slow in and slow out for this one. We're just gonna have it go at a consistent base. It's all right there, we need to really get the feet working better, but it's a good base to start with. We just wanna get the feet and the hips working. And so let's go ahead and grab this one. And let's just lock in all the main keys we had on these feet. And then we'll go six, we'll lift it up, zero both of those out, rotate it back here, and that'll go forward. Same position, zero out the heel tap and ankle pivot, drag it back a little, and go forward, and then we'll go from here, and we'll go to the other side, we're just going to go ahead and hit S on our keyboard again to lock in all those main keys, and then we'll go here to 18 for our passing position, zero out both of those values, do rotate in the foot, and we're going to have to play around with this a little bit more because we're not really getting those feet feeling like they've got very much contact. 
on there. So got to be aware of that. So it feels a little better. And zero both those out and drag that foot back on there. So let's see. Obviously still needs a lot of work, but it's getting there. So now let's go ahead and look here. I think we have a little bit of ankle pivot there. And we'll leave it where it is. Go T-frames. I'm going to zero that out. And I'll zero out the heel peel. So we really get that plant. And then we'll go three frames from here and zero that out. So then we have, what's that? seven frames of plant there. Okay. And two frames from there. And zero both of those out. And then go three frames from the end and we'll zero that out so we get that plant as well. Okay. And let's go look at the other foot again. And we go two frames from there. And zero on both of those values out so we get it flat against the ground, zero both of, or just the heel peel out there, two frames from there, zero those out, three frames from the end, and we'll zero that out, and let's see that now, I think there's a little too much um, angle pivot, so let's look at our values here. Let's look at our translate Ys. Try to balance them out. That's going to be the up and down the most passing positions. And let's look at our rotate Xs. It's going to be the drag back on those passing positions. We're just going to try to find, make sure that uh, there's not one certain step that's feeling more prominent than the others, but they're all feeling fairly balanced. And then let's look at the ankle pivot. That's one thing we did want to scale back. So I'm just going to grab all of those values here and scale them back. some stuff going on with the knees, but we're not going to worry about that yet until we really get the hips and stuff locked in here. And let's look at the toe tap. We'll go ahead and drag the toe here. Left it up here. I'm going to go three frames and zero it out. So that way we'd have the, uh, this is where the heel contacts two frames, and then the ball basically will contact and then the toe. So we've got a little bit of successive movement throughout there for that contact and it'll help sell that a little bit better and let's drag the toe there again we'll lift it up here three frames and zero it out again and then go to the other one and we'll do a little bit of toe tap up here three frames zero it out and go here Lift it up here, three frames. We'll zero it out again. Let's drag it back here. And we'll lift it up. And let's see. All right, it's starting to work. Now let's go ahead and look at the hips a little bit closer. Let's go ahead and save our file as well. And let's start building those up and down positions. So let's go for this one, we'll go at three is our down, and then nine would be our up, just to vary the up and down a little bit more. And then so 15 would be our down, and 21 will be our up. Still keeping with this being on sixes, but instead of being uh, passing position that's the highest or the contact position that's the highest, we're just varying it a little bit more. Up a little bit more here. clean that up and I think I'm probably gonna I might avoid using too much of straight legs just for the time sake so that we don't have to do a whole knee pass on this one as well because that's something that you really want to get in that's almost on ones and twos that you really have to put that in um, which just for the sake of trying to get these done in about an hour we don't do a whole lot there and that's a little high so we'll scale it back a little bit and let's see here. Okay, 
And let's keep going here, so let's go on six. I'm gonna push our transit X over here, so it's over the planted foot. Just do a little bit of weight shift here, there. And then we'll zero it out, and let's watch that again. just be from this camera angle that we're watching the repeat on. So let's go ahead and watch it again. Okay, and let's do a little bit of a rotate Z here. Just a tip off here, there, there. And we'll zero it out. So we're going to offset the chest as well so it's not so weeble wobbly and let's look at the rotate y so we'll do a little bit here to clear the front planted foot and a little bit there and a little bit here and there and then back again and let's uh, balance that out as well So I want to push the hips forward just a touch here. So I'm like that. Okay, and let's start looking at the chest then. So let's start off, we'll do a little bit of rotate Z here to counter the hips swinging one side and the other. sides. I think the amount's probably about right. It's just uh, making sure it doesn't have any outliers here. Okay, and let's do a little bit of rotate Y. Get a little bit of twist in there. So that the shoulders are twisting from the way that the hips are set up. good amount of value throughout and let's balance this out a little bit more. This one's a little bit too high, that one's a little bit too high. Those two seem fairly balanced and this one. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm not going to the decimal point or anything, but just so that there's a pretty even amount throughout. And let's go ahead and just tip the head back Maybe 
again, this is more like what we were looking at the hips when we first did them, um, where you have a little bit of slow out of that first pose, and then a good deal of movement, then slow into that last pose. I think we can hold that for about two more frames. Throw our blink in there and then have it go up again. Now let's see where those eyelids are. Okay, so I'll go ahead and hold that. Do they have a lower lid? Oh, they do. Okay. Thank you. We'll close it up here. So let's take what we have here and let's go with two frames. We'll hold that. And we'll go at about seven and we'll cue this one and we'll do an overshoot here. I wish we could close them up a little bit more. Don't really close all the way. That's okay. Hold that there, and we'll keep this one, and we'll overshoot it up, we'll go two frames and keep that, so that's what we'll kind of go with. So let's see. I think I might be too fast to opening up, so we got one more frame to get there. Let's delay this all of one, like two more frames. So it kind of goes with the head tilt up a little bit as well. And then along with that, let's go ahead and look at the mouth here. Let's have it go down a little bit more. Then we'll close it. It's a little sensitive, so I'm going to do most of this in a graph editor. Keep this one. And we'll keep that, so we still have a little bit of movement throughout the whole thing. Okay, so let's look at that now. delay the move for about two frames. Let's delay it one more frame. Let's look at it now. 
so we've got a little, a little bit of overlap in the lip. And let's look at the eyebrows here. Let's go a little bit higher here. Keep down there. Get the brow motion down here. Let's go up again here. Sometimes go up again there. overshaded a little bit more. Okay, that feels pretty good. And now let's look at the arms a little bit. So I think what we'll do is we'll just have, let's make sure, grab everything here, go to our first frame, we'll set that. And we'll scrunch it in a little bit more. Does seem to be a little bit of discrepancy in the swing of the elbow for Nikki. And let's also turn it a little bit more.
let's like let's just delete the hand movements right here because it feels like there's a little too much twist in there. But I think it's just because of how much is on the chest. So maybe we'll take the rotate Z and we'll scale it back a little bit. So we are on the hips. It's causing a little too much swing. Let's have 46 be our ending frame. Just a little less movement here. Let's see. Or maybe we should just do a little bit less on this one. A little bit sooner. Look at the uh, fingers here. Let's keep this one. Let's go ahead and save our file too while we're at it. Okay. And let's um, do a little bit of a crunch here.
hold that first pose for a little bit longer. So I'll hold just a little bit here. And then hold 20, hold 25, I'll hold it for a little bit longer. And actually let's hold it for about two more frames there. start doing a little bit of uh, delay and everything. So let's grab the uh, index 2 and 3, middle 2 and 3, pinky 2 and 3, and we'll delay them a frame. And then the third part, we'll delay those a frame. And everything on the index, push it forward a frame. Everything on the pinky, we'll push it back a frame. You can see that. Take the pinky and delay that last move in two more frames here. And just one more frame. And then you can hold for. two frames. And let's see if we can hold the uh, move just everything here for another couple of frames with that hold. sooner and a frame longer. And for the other hand, maybe we'll just um, bring it in a little tighter overall. fingers. We'll pull these ones in a little bit more here. Swing it right in with um, grip that on here. And maybe let's tweak the wrist a little bit. This first one into the little hands, whole hands, beginning move for a while. And then ending line with the top 46, move that up 42. So let's see here. Okay, we need to hold that first one.
move the tips of that finger. I'll delay those a tiny. The tips. I'll delay those a tiny. Let's see. So like right here. Let's go ahead and overshoot. Closer look there. There, there, that works okay. We'll push it forward a tiny. Alright, I feel like that works okay. Let's turn the curves off here. We can definitely spend another hour or so polishing this thing up, but. bead in there. We've got our lock there, loosen up the mouth and everything. So let's take a look back at where we started. We were looking at the beautiful work of Kai Nielsen and he said the imagination can conceive of infinite possibilities and grasp an alternate vision where hope remains undimmed. So keep up the hope, keep up uh, the drive and take another step in your journey. I hope you're doing that each and every day. Use your imagination as much as, much as you can and push it and try different things and keep encouraging those around you. And I hope you guys are just enjoying this journey that we're taking together. I love you guys lots. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, I think that'll do it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me. I think this one was definitely uh, a fun one. Uh, we had a little bit of an acting beat in here. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, an enjoying, an en <laughs> a joyful time to uh, spend with you guys tonight. Yeah, we'll wrap it up here because I'm getting rambly. So I love you guys lots and we'll see you for some more animation tomorrow.